Good evening. My name is Gary Hutton. I'm going to welcome you to Herman Holloway Jr.'s show this evening. Obviously, for you regular Herman Holloway viewers, I'm not Herman. Mm -hmm. But uh, I certainly want to thank him uh, for the opportunity to be with you this evening to discuss a, a really important subject, something that, in my mind, is probably one of the more um, issues confronting the city of Wilmington uh, as we speak. But before we get started, so we do have a full show. We have a lot of really good guests, a lot of impressive guests, a lot of folks that, uh, that the uh, Holloway viewers know, because you've seen them all before, and a bunch of folks that are, have been very active in our community and very active with this important issue. But we do want a little bit of, uh, take care of a little bit of uh, housekeeping before we get into the show. First of all, Herman would be really upset with me if I didn't, on his behalf, uh, acknowledge uh, the mayor and the folks that were involved, Mayor Williams and all of the folks that were involved in the uh, fight on Saturday night. I didn't get a ticket. I just, I just throw that out there. But uh, I understand there was a, a full house. The place was sold out. And um, out of the 1,200 or so folks that were there, I don't think there were any complaints. Everybody thought that, that it, was a, it was a great evening. Also, I wanted to send a uh, shout out to Julia Cephas, who had hoped to be with us tonight, who's a little bit under the weather right now, probably partially because of all of the work that he's been doing with this particular issue. So we want to wish uh, Julius a, a speedy recovery. I'm sure he'll be here the next time uh, uh, we have a show on this particular issue. So Julius, you gotta, you, you're represented well this evening. <laughs> Take care and get, get yourself healthy and get back in, out there and, and into the fight. And uh, this particular fight, it has to do with the Port of Wilmington that, uh, that many of you uh, here have been involved with, all of you here have been involved with um, um, certainly um, over the last, last several months. And a lot of stuff has happened since the late we, we had the folks together. So before we get started, I want to introduce everybody. I'm going to let you introduce yourselves, and I will make some comments. I'm going to start with you, John, and then you can go down, and then we can come back on the second row. But why don't you all introduce yourselves and let kind of let our viewing audience know who we have with us this evening. This is really a distinguished panel. I don't even know why I'm here. <laughs> but, so, but why don't you all introduce yourselves and uh, kind of let folks know who you are and how you how you're involved with the sure, uh, thank Port you, of Gary. Uh, I feel like old Homewood. We did a similar show about a month ago, and you were right. hosting the show, and you did a, did a tremendous job, and most, most of the people here were, were there on that show. So right. thank you very much. Uh, I'm John Flaherty. I'm the lobbyist for uh, International Longshoremen's Association, uh, Local 1694-1. Uh, okay. Yeah. And you've done a lot of other stuff, so we won't, oh, sure. we yeah. won't, we won't get into your, yeah. own res your whole resume. We mm -hmm. don't have enough time. <laughs> Um, I'm Nancy Willing. Uh, I'm a community activist, and I have followed this and been writing about it on my blog, The Delaware Way. Happy to be here. Been blogging a long time, and a lot of, got a lot of folks reading that blog. I, I do. I'm uh, glad to say I get a couple thousand a day. Awesome. Yeah, that's something. Yeah. Who's that other young man down at the end uh, there with you? Paul Cutler, Vice President, Local 1694-1. Got uh, 35 years in down at the port. Shout out to Julius. I uh, hope you're feeling better this week. I know we got a lot of big meeting tomorrow, so. Paul, to see we got some distinguished uh, representatives from 1694-1 on the on the second row. Why don't you, Mike, start with you? I'm Michael Barnes. Uh, shout out to you. Guys, you, got, you got to talk up. Man. <laughs> I'm Mike you Barnes. Out the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mike Barnes. Uh, shop store 1694-1. Mike, thanks. I was here one time before. My name's Clarence Bird. I'm Chief Shop Steward for 1694-1. It's always a pleasure. Clarence, thanks for, thanks for being with us tonight. Well, uh, f many of you have probably been watching and, and following this issue. It's a, a very important issue because what's at stake here, quite frankly, is the future of the Port of Wilmington. And the Port of Wilmington is, uh, continues to be an active employer in our state. It continues to provide jobs. Um, that pay a livable wage. Uh, a number of people are employed directly by the Port of Wilmington. And there are a whole lot of other folks that benefit from the fact and, and get spin-off benefits 
by the fact that we still have a thriving port in the city of Wilmington. Now, now for some of our uh, viewers, John, you know that about 1996, so that's what, about 16 years ago, mm -hmm. 17 years ago, the, up until 17 years ago, the Port of Wilmington was a part of the city of Wilmington. Mm -hmm. And at that time, uh, the, the port went from the city to the state mm -hmm. with the understanding that the state was going to be in a better position to, to, to expand and, mm -hmm. and modernize the Port of Wilmington. And why don't you just, and I know you remember that sure. well. On oh, yeah. Well, the Port of Wilmington started, I think, in the early 20s. And over the years has been the beneficiary of a lot of uh, federal, uh, city, and state uh, infrastructure improvements. You know, cranes, uh, dockside uh, improvements. They got a huge, uh, one of the largest uh, dockside uh, cold storage facilities in the entire country. And uh, in the mid-90s, the city felt uh, that the state was in a better position to, to help fund the capital improvements. So the, the Port of Wilmington uh, went from being a city agency over to uh, became a, a state agency, the Diamond State Port Corporation. And it's operated, I believe, very, very well over the last 16, 17 years. Uh, they're like the, one of the top uh, ports of entry for perishable foods, uh, various fruits, you know, clementines, uh, apples, uh, you name it. Uh, they have a, a, a wonderful uh, uh, storage facility down there where fresh fruits can be kept uh, uh, fresh before they're distributed all across the East Coast. And uh, recently there was an effort, uh, actually the effort is ongoing, and even though it's been uh, held in secret, to uh, either lease, privatize, or whatever you want to call it. And most of the people involved in the port, whether they be the workers who work there, where the businesses at the port are kept totally in the dark uh, about uh, the ramifications of what's going to happen down there. And uh, um, one of the companies uh, that's been mentioned continually in the paper, Kinder Morgan, as uh, the, quote, preferred bidder, uh, does not really have a track record of operating ports. Uh, you know, if you work at the Port of Wilmington, you have to go through some uh, very extensive background checks, but yet there seems to be a double standard here that if you work at the port, you have a background check, but if you're going to be doing business uh, as a uh, operator of the port, there is little, if any, in the way of background checks. And as Nancy can attest and some of the others, uh, Kinder Morgan uh, does not have the uh, most distinguished environmental or labor record uh, uh, to, uh, uh, that, that, that should be coming out. So uh, through the leadership of uh, Senator Robert Marshall, a bill was introduced in the Delaware General Assembly, and uh, a lot of others uh, uh, came to the forefront. The bill passed the Senate, went over to the House, passed the House unanimously, and came back to the Senate and uh, passed again, and the governor signed the bill. And essentially, uh, the public has a right to know what's going on at the Port of Wilmington, and this bill would uh, allow that th to occur. Well, let's just back up a little bit, John, and, 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 we'll, and, and I'm we'll get back to that because that's an important point mm -hmm. but let's talk about the, i mean we and we'll, one of the things that happened here is that the state the way i understand it said look we've you know we promised that we would do the modernization and we would and we would uh we would keep this uh the port of wilmington competitive and i'm sure that all of our panelists here are are, are, are support that notion of keeping the warm the port of wilmington competitive doing the modernization uh, improving the infrastructure, um, all of those things that are that are necessary to keep the uh, port open and keep the jobs flowing and keeping that mm -hmm. that commerce flowing in, at at the uh, city of Wilmington. But at some point, the state said, "Well, we're not sure we can handle all of this, and we we want to go out and get a get a private partner." And uh, we so they put a bid out, I guess. Mm -hmm. And in, during that bid process, they came up with uh, Kinder Morgan. Mm -hmm. as the most likely uh, partner uh, for this. So normally, when any state organization puts out a bid, one of the things that the, one of the boilerplate kind of language that's in any bid that I've seen says we want the most responsible bidder uh, for this job. So one of the things that you want to do is you want to look at um, that bidder and see whether or not this, this is, a, is, a, is a good fit whether or not this bidder, um, number one, is let's just let's first of all look at what they say. Let, we'll, we'll get to 
any suspicions we have, but let's look at what they say that they're they're um, uh, they're they're going to do, and and look at whether or not this makes a, a good fit uh, for the city of Wilmington and the state of Delaware. And I know Nancy, you looked at uh, uh, this 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 potential um, uh, partner at the Putin and, and and have vlogged about it quite a bit on your blog in terms of uh, whether or not that that in fact. Um, they are the best per, the, 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 the best possible fit for the city of Wilmington. Well, to, because everything has been um, undercover, it's hard to make a judgment much. But um, best practice says you, you go by what they call clean hands. Mm -hmm. And so you don't enter, enter into uh, uh, arrangements with uh, a business that uh, hasn't shown good faith in any number of ways. This Kinder Morgan has um, shown bad faith. There's, there's well-documented uh, EPA violations, uh, labor uh, violations, uh, labor, uh, they haven't paid their um, workers properly. They've been found bribing, uh, deliberately polluting, really cutting corners. And um, from what I understand, uh, the, the people involved on the state level uh, haven't wanted uh, any discussion of that. There's been, there's been active, um, there's an active suppression of, you're not allowed to really talk about that. but. This is a, uh, uh, when the state was interested in um, taking bids to sell or lease a toll road in Delaware, uh, a lot of people said, you can't do that, you don't even try to do that without a bunch of public hearings. This is something, you know, a state asset of that magnitude and that importance uh, has to be thoroughly vetted by the public. So just in the face of it, um, all this stuff behind the door and uh, just, it it creates a lot of suspicion, unfortunately. That's where we are right now. And I think that that's, that really, John, gave rise to this legislation being necessary mm -hmm. because at, at one point, uh, I believe, uh, Alan Levin, who is the, uh, what's, he's the Economic Development Cabinet he, he's Secretary. He's director of the Delaware Economic Development Office, but also the chairman of the uh, Diamond State Port Corporation. And when the Diamond State Port Corporation was looking at this uh, uh, potential deal, um, there was a board meeting at a Diamond State Port Corporation, and they they kind of presented Kinder Morgan as a as a as a potential viable partner. But also at that time, Alan kind of suggested that well, since this is a lease, and this is these are words, since this is a lease and not a sale, we probably don't have to go to the General Assembly for approval. So mm -hmm. we're we're just going to do this deal. We don't we don't need that public hearing stuff that, that Nancy was talking about. And, uh, and the General Assembly said, about Senator Marshall and some others said, well, sure. well, wait a minute, this is an important deal. It, it involves the sale or lease, but under the terms that I've seen so far, I can't tell the difference between this lease and a sale. Uh, it might, might all be semantics. Uh, the, the bottom line, I think, is that the public has a right to know. Absolutely. And uh, when you're dealing with uh, a state agency, which the Diamond State Port Corporation is, and you're dealing with you know, tens and possibly hundreds of millions of dollars worth of assets at the Port of Wilmington that have been purchased through public dollars, the public has a right to know. Uh, the union workers that uh, have been there, I know Paul's been down there 35 years, they have a right to know what's going to happen in the future. Uh, the businesses through the uh, Wilmington Maritime Port Corporation uh, sent the governor a letter basically saying the same thing. We'd like to know what's going to happen here. You know, Kinder Morgan is basically six companies in one, uh, but all throughout the company, uh, they specialize in, they don't own the uh, minerals or the uh, oil. They, they transport it and they store it. And can you have that compatibility? with uh, fresh fruit at the Port of Wilmington. I don't think you can. Well, and there's yeah. just a lot of questions, a lot of concerns, and uh, the public is going to have the right to review this if and when it comes up before the uh, Delaware General Assembly bond bill. I was just going to add that um, I hope we do get into some questions of finance tonight. These guys know how many jobs there are. They know kind of all that business. But what we do know just from reading what's um, on the table uh, evidently, uh, how good of a job has the Diamond State Port Corporation been doing? Because there's evidently 150 million backlog in maintenance. So what does right. that really mean for the status of the people that have been in charge of running this port um, to find that kind of a lag? And that's what's being made up. There's been no promises 
from what we can tell from this company, Kinder Morgan, that they're going to do the expansive, the expansion into the 500 million range, which <coughs> has been put out. They, they, I think the, the second bidder also, I'm sure, said they could, they would do the backlog of 150 million in repairs. That's all Kinder Morgan has really promised to do. But why are we in a situation where that's even the case? Uh, you have to wonder how good of a job this, this, um, this, these people have done in running the port. Well, let's one of the one of the obvious stakeholders in terms of uh, what happens at the Port of Wilmington are the current employees at the Port of Wilmington, the folks that that make the Port of Wilmington work. Those folks that are in there day in and day out, offloading ships, onloading ships, and doing all the other things, all the other jobs that are required to do in order to make that operation successful, and have been doing that for for well over 100 years in terms of keeping uh, the Port of Wilmington successful and, and competitive. It would seem to me that uh, certainly even if Kinder Morgan uh, did not feel an obligation to have some dialogue with the, uh, the current employees, certainly the state of Delaware um, and the Diamond State Port Corporation reasonably uh, should be expected to have some some open and, 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 and uh, quite frankly, frank di uh, discussion with those folks that are currently there. Why don't you all help me out in terms of the, in terms of the flow of information that you, have, you guys have gotten? I mean, um, we're getting bits and pieces, bits and pieces. I mean, we had a meeting last week, and uh, they're guaranteeing the uh, office personnel three years keeping their jobs. But uh, they haven't guaranteed us. They haven't said anything to us about how many years. Our contract expires <coughs> at the end of September. Mm -hmm. So who knows what they may want to do. They may want to come in and, and, and not negotiate a contract. Maybe bring in non-union. We don't know. I mean, I've asked questions about the pensions. What happens to my pension? You know, I start Kinder Morgan on Monday. Mm -hmm. They take over on a Friday. Do I start at zero you know, for vacations, seniority? Do I, you know, no answer. They have no answer. So, I mean, how do you go into a, a situation, a deal like this, with no answers? Well, it would also seem to me, I mean, and, and you mentioned, uh, both of you, Dancy and John, mentioned this whole question about a correct fit. So, so Kinder Morgan is in the energy business. What's kept the Port of Wilmington alive over, alive, uh, you know, for the last hundred years or so, has largely been the uh, importation of fresh fruits and, and those, uh, those kind of commodities. And there's a question about whether or not these two business can, businesses can peacefully coexist. And, um, and, and, and I'm not sure that we have an answer to that. Can you, can you have energy at the Port of Energy products at the Port of Wilmington and fresh fruit? And if Kinder Morgan is primarily in the energy business, are there still not questions out there about what happens to our existing customers that have been loyal customers in the fruit business um, over the last X number of years? Are they, are they, are they going to have to negotiate with Kinder Morgan? Or are they going to be squeezed out? Um, how many, you know, if Kinder Morgan comes in, what does that do in terms of, sure. of the environment? Have they, have, what's their, and, and you've alluded to their, both of you have alluded to their environmental record. And what's that going to do to the, uh, the uh, job picture at the Port of Wilmington? If you bring in a new, if you bring in a new uh, operator, because I, I, I believe that's really what we're talking about under the terms of this lease agreement, sales agreement, whatever you want to call it. This, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, the state of Delaware basically drops back and Kinder Morgan, take, Kinder Morgan takes over the operations of the entire port. So even the existing customers may have to negotiate and deal with Kinder Morgan. Is that, is that correct or y'all help me out here? Because y'all well, know I mean, a lot they, more than I do. They said that uh, there's still going to be a board. Yeah, I understand. But I mean, if Kinder Morgan is putting up the money, right. who's calling the shots? Mm -hmm. well. And it yeah. seems like all they're going to be doing is the board is collecting rent from Kinder Morgan. They're so they really won't in. have any input in terms of the day-to-day -day operation, exactly. who, who gets to be who gets to, to get a lease at the Port of Wilmington. That, all of those decisions move from the Diamond State Port Corporation. Exactly. And could to they sublease, to do a sublease, Kindle Morgan sublease to another company? Well, that, these are all, 
these are all important questions that that I think need to be answered and and the way that had it not been for I think it's Senate Bill 3 mm -hmm. and I'm gonna tell you you all did a lot of good work on that you work with the uh, Senator Marshall and some of the other legislators and I'm gonna tell you I've, I've uh, kind of watched local and state politics for a long time mm -hmm. and the, the way all of those folks came together mm -hmm. and worked to put that legislation in and get it passed and I mean in record time I and mean, John you've been down there a long mm -hmm. time you, I've not seen a whole lot of legislation okay. that gets written and passed with that level of support I think mm -hmm. uh, between the House and the Senate I counted about six no votes out of all together is that uh, initially in the Senate there were uh, there were nine and then it was down to eight the second time okay but in the house uh, uh, very little opposition in the house okay uh, there were some amendments you know you take a look at the news journal recently did a story about the port of baltimore and the privatization there and one of the uh, officials from the uh, longshoremen was quoted as saying you know the the operator that's operating the port of baltimore uh the lease now they, they have a record of uh over 20 years working at the port of baltimore so they were happy with it business has increased i think about 15 percent kinder morgan is basically a pipeline company they transport fluids through pipelines and they put them on ships they recently signed an agreement with shell to uh, a partner at a, a liquefied natural gas export facility down in uh, elba island georgia and uh you know a couple of years ago there was talk about uh, we're going to need liquefied natural gas here so there was talk about putting a uh, liquefied natural gas import facility across from Claymont which would extend into Delaware and uh, uh, that uh, that plan eventually was was squashed but it has big time implications when you talk about running LNG ships and I'm not sure if Kinder Morgan wants to do that or not but they they do it in other places you're talking about a large safety zone up in the uh, up in Boston they have uh, LNG ships coming up and uh, there's a safety zone in front and behind the ship I think it's like a quarter mile in front uh, a, qu a quarter mile in the in the rear and a half mile in front and I think a couple hundred yards on either side so you're effectively shutting the channel down with that size of the safety zone uh, there's a bridge like the Delaware Memorial Bridge up in Boston they have to shut down because it's so dangerous so uh, people are just not going to put up with that kind of uh, imposition here and if you are a company that uh, is in uh, whose livelihood depends on shipping you can't afford to have the channel shut down just to have an LNG ship load or unload so uh, there's a lot more than just uh, uh, you know having a facility here there's a lot of safety implications and it, you know who's going to pay for the lost businesses these other ports uh, other businesses are going to have so there's a lot of questions it's just uh, a lot of questions a lot of concerns and I'm just not convinced that uh, there's a problem here I don't think you know what's the old saying if it's not broke you don't need to fix it right. uh, I don't think the Port of Wilmington is broke I think uh, the state needs to show the same level of commitment we showed to the University of Delaware we, sho we shovel out 130 million bucks a year to University of Delaware. Mm -hmm. Delaware State gets close to 40 million. Delaware Tech gets about 70. And the Port of Wilmington has to go begging. So I think we have to recognize that the port is a uh, economic engine. And uh, the state of Delaware needs to step up to the plate and uh, exercise their fiduciary responsibility to make the necessary investments and keep the Port of Wilmington competitive. And it would seem to me, too, that at, at, you know, as, as we speak, money you know for for a variety of reasons money is pretty cheap these days mm -hmm. so for the port for the state of delaware uh to go to the bond market and borrow whatever whatever monies they need mm -hmm. to make the necessary uh improvements down there now i don't i don't imagine that there's been any time in the last 10 or 20 years that would be better than right now to go borrow the money so that i'm not to borrow the money that they need in order to upgrade and modernize the the port of Wilmington, and I think part of this is a question about how committed the state of Delaware is mm -hmm. um, to the port of Wilmington. So there's a real question. I, I, and and I, I remember the last time you were here, John. You you raised the question: Has the state ever really made its case for why it needs to go out and get a a partner, mm -hmm. privatize, lease? 
whatever whatever language we want to use has the state of Delaware made that argument um, or this Diamond State Port Corporation made that uh, a convincing and compelling argument as to why they actually need need a, a, a partner and, that, and I think that has to be thrown in the mix but sure. I, I, don't think, I don't think they have made that argument and I think that's probably why there was so much support when uh, Paul and Mike and uh, Clarence came down to the General Assembly and were lobbying uh, th there was a lot of interest on both sides of the aisle about the, the, uh, the economic well-being of the Port of Wilmington. And uh, I don't think most of the legislators that we talked to, uh, they weren't convinced either that there was a need to privatize the Port of Wilmington. So I think all of us are, are looking for answers. We're trying to find out, you know, why are we going this route? I mean, you take, there's a lot of uh, public agencies out there that operate better in the public sphere. I, I can't imagine doing away with the Delaware State Police and replacing them with uh, so-and-so security guard right. system, you know. So uh, there is a, a commitment, uh, there is a, a, a level of uh, a fiduciary responsibility the state has here, and I, I think that uh, they've conducted these discussions or uh, efforts to uh, bring in a partner in secret, and I think they need to be much more forthcoming to make the case for why we're even doing this. In about, in about three minutes, uh, we're going to take a break, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to take your calls. Um, so we want you all to call in and, uh, um, with any questions or, or concerns you, you may have about this very, very important issue because I, I think we need to understand that what happens at the Port of Wilmington has impact on the entire city of Wilmington, and it has economic implications uh, mm -hmm. for the entire state of Delaware. So this whole question about um, uh, what happens at the Port of Wilmington, this is just not some kind of intellectual exercise. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is something that's going to impact people's lives. It's going to impact the workers that are currently down there. And quite frankly, it's going to impact all of the surrounding community, not just the city of Wilmington, but certainly out into, into Newcastle County because uh, you are uh, certainly putting that whole port into a position where safety has got to be um, a, a major concern and not, not only just the safety of those houses around there where folks houses and property uh, may be put at risk but certainly our, uh, our water as well in terms of the, the entire Delaware River maybe. And I, I quite frankly I like to know how Kinder Morgan became the quote preferred bidder. I mean what did they offer to become a preferred bidder? Well you what? know it's, it's really interesting yeah. because I mean once we get past the question whether or not and we're not sure that that question has been satisfied, whether or not you even need to go out and get a, uh, a, a, a partner in there. Once you get paid, let's assume for the sake of this discussion uh, that you do need a partner. Well, the question is, who makes sense? Mm -hmm. In Baltimore, and you mentioned, they bought in a partner that they've been working with for 20 years. Right. They know these folks. Mm -hmm. So they didn't interrupt the existing bus mm -hmm. business. They solidified. Mm -hmm the existing business and then expand it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, so that uh, that was an entirely different uh, situation sure. than they're talking about in the city of Wilmington. Nancy? Um, I think uh, part of the equation would have to be uh, the idea of the dredging. That's been a con contested by, well, I guess, New Jersey. Uh, we're trying to make the case the governor and the um, secretaries have been um, in support of that almost from the beginning um, and it's a big investment which now some of the funding's in doubt to do the final piece but the justification for the dredging probably went hand in hand with well that means we have to actually need the dredging for the Port of Wilmington and so it, it could be folded into the Yeah, but Nancy that still doesn't answer the question why Kinder Morgan? Well and also the fact remains is that from the little bit of information that we have Kinder Morgan is not going to spend to the Delaware River to take advantage of the dredging so, so, that's so that, that makes it a, yeah. a less likely partner yeah. than a more likely partner. With all the I other mean, negatives. That I mean, know. yeah, and I mean, one of the things, that, I mean, getting back to the original case, the state said, look, we need at least a half a billion dollars down mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And, and I, thought, I think a lot of folks were under the impression that, uh, that Kinder Morgan had these deep pockets and they were ready to come in and save the Port of Wilmington and, mm -hmm. and plop down a half a billion dollars. And before they even got through the negotiations, <laughs> 
before they, I mean, they're really early. They, no, we're not talking about half. Let, yeah. Let's be clear, folks. Right. We don't have a half a billion dollars. Well, we have a half a billion dollars, but not to use it to pour the woman to. <laughs> Maybe a hundred and fifty million dollars. Well, that right. changes the that changes the picture a mm -hmm. lot because mm -hmm. if it's a hundred and fifty million versus a half a billion, it, it, you have to raise the question about whether or not that's an amount that, that Delaware could reasonably reasonably absorb in uh, in, 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 in its uh, bond offerings at the. Mm -hmm at the bond market. But I think the question that does the public have a right to know, I think that's been answered with the passage of Senate Bill 3 and the signing of that into law through the help of, uh, you know, Nancy and Al Jackson and uh, Liz Allen and many, many others in the legislature, uh, a message was sent. The well, message was sent from the labor community, the business community. Yeah. We have a right to know what's going on and uh, any change down here, I think, needs to be uh, publicly vetted. And no, and in, in no, sh in no small, uh, in no small credit is due to 1694-1. I mean, yep. you guys, have, you folks have uh, been out there uh, strong, and uh, and and have helped clarify what the issue is. They here. were they were down the hall, eight, ten of them, you know, and talking to the legislators and talking to anybody who would listen, and it had a huge impact. Yeah to have and, um, these guys come down here. Some of the number crunching has, uh, with what little that we know already, has shown that we're getting a really bad deal. That, you know, that we're getting a miserable, tiny little return with, with what, what we fear the Kinder Morgan's going into. So we're not getting a percent of the business as it might grow in 50 years. We're getting a miserable set, two, two, two and a half million, well, the, compared, the to what, to, compared to what the potential may be. And this is a state asset that we've invested in, so nobody's n the the number cruncher. I mean, we really, what I would like to see is that when the bond bill um, gets the information that that's made public at that point, and right. then I'd like to see the the really great uh, talent that we have at the General Assembly with the lawyers and 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 finance people to really dig into this and really see, you know, the ups and downs, because a lot of people have may already made an assessment that this is a really bad deal. Not only is it necessarily probably well, if possible. If it's two and a half million, ahead. what's two and a half million in 50 years? Right. What's that really going to be worth? Right. <coughs> That's the thing. Not only is there a question about whether or not this deal itself is mm -hmm. good, and I think that public scrutiny and the, and the, and the transparency helps us to evaluate mm -hmm. whether or not the deal is good, but you also have to look at whether or not Kinder Morgan is the best partner. Mm -hmm. Let's assume the deal, I mean, let's assume you need to move forward with, a, with, a, with another partner. Is Kinder Morgan, now, I mean, Julius has a, has a great line and he talks about, well, look, if I go out to get a job, I have to pass a background check and a credit report. These guys, you want to turn over to the, turn over the entire Port of Wilmington <laughs> without doing your due diligence. Yeah, I don't think, if Kinder Morgan was applying to work at the Port of <coughs> Home again, I don't think they would c cut the mustard. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think Julius's point is right on target there. I, there's a lot in, in this company's uh, background that, uh, to me, would uh, preclude them from being considered for a job at the Port of Home again. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, and, and one of the things about, you can say what you want about Delaware, uh, one of the things that, that Delaware has historically done is, is try to attract good corporate partners, mm -hmm. folks mm -hmm. that are responsible um, uh, corporate uh, uh, citizens in in our state, but this would I think be maybe a departure from the idea of bringing in responsible mm -hmm. corporate citizens that are concerned about their the community well, around right. them and uh, and have uh, more than uh, making a profit as an interest. And isn't it? that the biggest mystery? And it's that uh, we've seen uh, Jack Markell and Alan Levin and others put really huge millions and millions and millions of investments to bring in jobs. Right. Guaranteed jobs. Right. Good paying jobs. Yep. And here they're ready to throw them under the bus. They, these are good paying jobs that we've that we've had for, for all these years. Why aren't they important? Why aren't they something particularly in the sense that we know from all we know from Kinder Morgan's background is they've offered a three year, you know, deal to a few of these jobs. Um, and we know that they go in, they cut the pension benefits out, they they Cut the salary out, but Delaware City Refinery; those salaries were severely cut. So, so we may be keeping a couple jobs at Delaware Refinery, but that was a private business that that made a sh that made a shift. We c with well. the port is something we can we can cherish and, and preserve because it is ours. 
and the port, we should also be, we should all, uh, there should be a political statement, I think, that says that at the Port of Wilmington, that we expect certain standards to be mm -hmm. met. Mm -hmm. We're not going to take this state asset mm -hmm. and turn it over to folks that don't understand their responsibility uh, to our state and to our, and to our citizens. Listen, we're going to take a, a real quick break. We'll be back in about one minute, and we're going to take your phone calls as soon as we come back. Thank you for watching, and uh, um, please stay tuned. Welcome back to the Herman Holloway Jr. Show. Again, we want to thank you and thank Herman uh, for the opportunity to come on his hour. I mentioned earlier that the, uh, the fight was uh, Saturday night. That fight was Friday night. Uh -huh. I didn't know because I ain't had any tickets, but it was Friday. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, but listen, we, this is a very important issue. We are talking about the Port of Wilmington. Across your screen right now, you see a, uh, a web page for, uh, for the Port of Wilmington where you can go right to that, to that uh, to that page, and you can do an on, you can sign an online petition to show your support 
for the saving this, the uh, Port of Wilmington and making sure and showing that you're interested and in having the Port of Wilmington remain a viable part of our of our community um, and continue to move in a way that's that's going to be in the best interest uh, of our of our port and of our city and of our state. Clarence, I know we. I cut you short. Now I'm, I'm gonna take the hit for that. You were getting ready to have a comment before we went to our break. So. Oh yeah, it's just been um, going across my mind for the last, I guess, two months. That um, when did this start? The, the port was in bad health because, um, in my mind, it started about four years ago, three years ago. You started hearing about privatization, and I was thinking it started from the top, meaning the person that's who's the uh, chairperson of the. Mr. Board. Levin. Right. right. Yeah. Um, that's where I. That's where I was thinking. Um, because every time I hear the port needs, the port needs, but we were in negotiation, I think, about three years ago, and they were told the port does not have to be in the red, I mean, in the black to uh, to be viable. And then all of a sudden we hear now that we got to make X amount of dollars, and the uh, hearing about um, Kendall Morgan coming in and want to uh, lease for about 50 years, it was brought up by Nancy. That's only about two point, maybe three million a year, so the state, we as employees, we give back like 31 million a year as uh, in taxes. So, uh, and there's bonds that they could go and purchase and and, and bring money, build an infrastructure of the port, and uh, we can negotiate and go down the road for the brothers and sisters' careers. Uh, pass over to Paul. Paul. Yeah, I, I was involved when the city sold the port to the state. Okay. And we went down in Dover. We met with. Uh, Carper's man, John Carney, they mm -hmm. assured us at that time mm -hmm. that nothing would change. Everything right. would stay the same. We would roll your pensions over. We would not lose anything. And, and that's exactly what happened at that time. I but mean, they made be, that commitment they, up front. They made that up front, and they also told us at that time that the port is not in the business to make money because of the providing jobs, the tax base that the port supplies. Now you're talking about a company coming in for profit. Right. When they come in for profit, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to make cuts. There's no doubt about that. It, it's, it's been proven. That's what companies do when they come in. They cut. Who's going to get cut? The workforce? Then the state loses, too. They lose tax base. So, the, yeah, and when you look at it in those terms, yeah, but that also raises a, a really important question because we've talked about this question of labor intensity and whether or not you can, you can load liquefied gas, does, whether or not that requires as many people as offloading uh, a, a fruit ship. No, not at all. So, I mean, they told us in a meeting about a month or so ago that uh, they plan on doing more coal at the port. They want to put in a belt out to the Delaware River and load coal ships out there. Belt. So, yeah. So, we're not so I mean, that eliminates, that eliminates jobs. So, I mean, you, I mean, we don't have to be a rocket scientist here exactly. to say, if Kendall Morgan's making money with energy products, and that's where they make more money, mm -hmm. what are they likely to do? Move, expand their energy operation? That, that's their history. Uh, but uh, whatever they want to do, we have a right to know. That's right. And the General Assembly has spoken through the efforts of the uh, Longshoremen's Unions and Nancy and community activists. The public rose up and said, look, we do have a right to know what's going to happen at the Port of Wilmington. Even the business community, they wanted to know. Everybody wanted to know. And there was such a lack of confidence in how the state has uh, proceeded with this issue that it makes you, 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 it doesn't really give you a lot of confidence that they're proceeding with the best interests of the parties involved. So uh, there's a total lack of confidence, and that's based on their actions so far. And uh, we're going to have to take it one step at a time, I guess, and see where we go. Tomorrow, the Diamond State Port Corporation is meeting at uh, 10 o'clock uh, to hear from Kendra Morgan. We, most of, some of us are going to go down there for that, so uh, we intend to hear this. But why it has to be such a piecemeal thing is beyond me. If uh, the Port of Wilmington is a viable economic engine, and it is, you would think that uh, they would want to... Uh, uh, increase the level of business and certainly bring everybody in together early on to get their cooperation. And it's been almost just like the opposite, trying to exclude people from knowing what's happening. Yeah, and you, again, and I don't want to, I don't want to under uh, uh, 
uh, state the importance of the right kind of businesses. Mm -hmm. So it's important that you certainly want to expand the businesses down at the Port of Wilmington, but you want the right kind of businesses, mm -hmm. the businesses that, that make sense for an operation like the Port of Wilmington. We've got this one caller that's been trying to get through for a minute, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the phones. We don't have, we've only got about five minutes, so caller, turn your radio or your TV down, and let's, let's mm -hmm. keep it as brief as we can so we can get as many callers as we can. Hello, you're on, our, on the air. Hi, good evening to everyone. Um, I want to congratulate you, all of you, because if not for the grassroots, uh, none of this information would have gotten out to as many people as it has. Um, also, there are two issues. First of all, the citizens never petitioned the legislatures to sell the port or lease it. It is not for sale. That is our position. It is not for sale, and it certainly is not for lease for Kinder Morgan. Um, if the News Journal had printed all the research that we have given them on the uh, atrocious environmental record, labor record these people have, you'd have to ask Jack Markell and Alan Levin, why would you even bring a company like this to Delaware? Now, what we need is a new port manager. We need a port manager of international renown who knows other fruit companies from around the world and make this a fruit port. Uh, the other thing is we're calling for an independent audit of the port's finances for the last five years. The Harbor Trust Fund has been giving Delaware millions of dollars every year since 1986. Where did that money go? It was supposed to go for port infrastructure. Now, we all know that Kinder Morgan uses other people's money, not its own, if you look at their financial records. Uh, there, the $178.5 million scheduled to come in from the trust fund, uh, we believe, um, and this is why we need the accounting, uh, that they will use that $178.5 million uh, for the $200 million they're now promising um, that they're going to put into the port. So that would mean they would be using federal dollars, not their own dollars, federal dollars. So we're saying uh, we want... Are those federal uh, dollars available even if Kinder Morgan's not in the picture? Yes. yes, they would come to the state. Right. They would come to the state. Okay. But if Kinder Morgan takes the contract, Kinder Morgan could more or less take those federal funds. That's now, we're demanding, we're demanding this. We want the joint finance company to put back into the, into the budget money to run this port for at least one year. There is no rush to sell off or lease this port. So uh, we have to, uh, we've got to educate and inform the public about what, this is a pennies on the dollar sale for Kinder Morgan. It does not benefit well, us in the future. We have no idea what the future holds, and this is an asset we must hang on to. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let Take me, care. Okay, thank, she said She said a lot, of, she covered and a I, lot of ground I, I think in a relatively short period of time. I'm I sorry, think the caller is correct. Uh, the, the port is not broke. Yep. And I want to know what is the hurry to fast step this deal through? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Who's another, getting, you know, an another, the another benefit point. From it? Another point, because you, you know, when you when you start to do these deals, sometimes it's a little bit of a shell game. Mm -hmm. Another point is, which the point that she raised, and I don't know the answer to this question, but it looks like it could be them talking about investing millions, two hundred million, three hundred million dollars most of which is available to the state without Kinder yeah, Morgan. Yeah. So why do you even That's need mm -hmm. Kinder Morgan if, this, if most of this money is available to invest in the infrastructure and, and, and modernization of the port? And, uh, mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's like I'm selling you your own property. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know Senator uh, Coons has co-sponsored a bill okay. to uh, take care, uh, get federal money from the government to... Uh, do the infrastructure and take care of the national the ports on a national uh, level, uh, and all across. And, the country, and he's so. been and Senator Coons has been pushing that for for a while now. So that certainly that that would that all of that stuff, all of this information has to be factored into the equation. Once you make a decision this significant, you have to look at all of the available information. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's so important that this this whole deal be as transparent as we can possibly have exactly. it because the more we talk about it the more stuff we find out 
And maybe that's why they don't want it. To, I don't know. Maybe that's why they don't want why folks they, talking. Why are they trying to hide so much? You know, that's yeah. the thing. I don't Gary, about 10 years ago, we privatized the prison health service. Mm. Yep. It became a disaster. It was so bad, we had to bring in the federal government to have oversight. So, so, um, so just because you're, you're privatizing, a lot of folks like privatization. They think that there is a perception. I think it's, a, it's just a wrong perception. There's a perception out there that any time you privatize it, it's better for the taxpayers. Well, we've got so much information now yeah. that there are times that privatization is really not a good deal for the taxpayers at all. And, it, and it really comes into the details of the deal. Okay. You can have That's a public-private right. partnership that is upfront and makes sense and is a good deal for everybody, but it really takes all the stakeholders to come in and, and say, check it. Because the deals that have been gone sour on states for their lotteries, for their parking meters, you know, for their roadways, if they've been, if they've been really badly constructed deals, uh, sometimes these people, th these states, these citizens, these taxpayers are out all the money. Yeah, I think that's an important point because this, this whole discussion, and I really have to commend the, the, the folks at 1694-1, the whole discussion has not been a discussion about, well, we just want our job. Mm -hmm. It's been a discussion about what is in the best interest of everybody involved, and I think that's and I think that's been the, the absolute correct approach. Listen, we're just about out of time. Sorry for that next caller. Thank you all for tuning in. Please go to that uh, web page. If, if, if Abin would flash it back up on the screen uh, right before we go out, you can www.port slash I mean uh, hyphen petition dot com. You can sign up. Online, you don't have to go any farther than your computer and show everybody mm -hmm. your support for this particular issue. Thanks for tuning in. Good night. God bless. Good show, Gary. Good show. Thank you. Nice job. Good job.